Welcome to the Chuck and Deb Show, heard each Wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m. here on 1490 AM WWPR. And now, here's Chuck and Deb. I am Chuck and Deb, and, and welcome, welcome to, to Biker, Biker Life, Life with, with Chuck, Chuck and Deb. Deb. We're so truly grateful and thankful that you joined us today. We've got a very unique show lined up for you. You see, there's been a lot going on, hasn't there, Deb? Oh, way too much to I even say begin. So. It's been busy. Yeah. So you've got something in your hand. I don't know what you're doing over there. Well, we have to recognize our so show sponsors. See if I can even say that today. Yeah, Is that's Tony how and Guy Hairdressing Academy out of Colorado Springs, Colorado, and Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. We want to thank them for their sponsorship, and we want to crank things up, get the engine started, winds and knees. It and doesn't the sound like it. You're like, I mean, you're like, we get things started on the winds and knees. Come on, can't you get a little bit of enthusiasm just for at least a few minutes? Well, I can for a few minutes. I can do for a lot, but I'm kind of, oh. Yeah. I, I'm feeling like it's been a bad, broken record, and this whole sickness stuff just will not let us go. It's it's a, it's a culmination, at least for me, if I, I can't even say the word, but it's a whole bunch of things. That are culminating. <laughs> <laughs> Not good culmination. I still don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's all right, though. I, at least I can laugh at myself, right? Yep, that's right. And I laugh with you, so that's all good. But we are grateful that you've joined us today for our show. And we're going to have a little bit, as I mentioned, of a different show. And the reason is, is Deb and I have been sick. Yes. I've been sick for over a week now, and Deb decided that she was just going to catch it. Oh. She, she's caught it, and she's got it. And it is really tough. To, to really do just about anything at this point. Yep. So, but we're here for you guys. We want to make sure that we get the show on and keep the show rolling because we appreciate you and we appreciate you listening. So thanks for hanging in there with us. We have had a, not only a crazy week with being ill, but we've had a really exciting, exciting. week. Exciting. And that's another thing that's added on top of this because of the missed sleep, I guess you might say, mm -hmm. the long hours. Uh, so why don't you go into it, Deb? Take it away. Well, we I was going to actually turn the show over to you, but then you turn it over to me and it just makes life a little you, crazy. You can always turn it back. Well, I will in a moment. So let me just get the party started with the oh, exciting news. Yep, sick. I'm okay. trying to and I'm not feeling well, but we're getting the party started. Just started, Deb. So um, yeah, we had some exciting news. Any listeners that are following us know we have been anticipating the birth of our grandson. And the wonderful news is he did arrive and we've had a chance to meet him, Alexander Ray. He joined us on Sunday, the 25th, and so we are just so grateful that that day has come. He's healthy, mom's healthy, and now I'm going to turn it over to you. Yeah, they've actually, uh, everything went real well. Everybody's back at home, and uh, so it was very interesting. We got a call at 3.30 in the morning on Saturday, uh, no, Sunday morning. Sunday morning. 3.30 in the morning. And our daughter thinks that her water broke. So here we are at 3.30 in the morning, and I'm taking my time. <laughs> yeah, well. With, I knew uh, this was going to be a long day. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, you know, it wasn't quite the break like most movie show in this big, huge rush. She's like, things are just different. And it, there's almost, it was almost like a leak and she wasn't really sure what to do. Now, when I gave birth to my two children, I never had my water break. So I could not go from any experience to help her out with that. But I just had to say, you know, you've got to go with what you're feeling. Um, we talked through it. We walked through it. Um, and um, we decided, she decided it was time to go to the hospital and figure out what was really going on. So it was better to be safe and sorry. It, the next day was her due date, so she made the choice that we were going to go to the hospital. So you did. You took your time. We got yeah, I, Because ready. I knew what was up. I'd been there before with you. We walked the halls for hours upon yes. hours upon hours. And, of course, at the same time, in the back of my head, I'm a little bit worried. Oh, what if she all of a sudden has the baby? But I didn't think that was anywhere in sight. Yeah. Um, so, But we took our time. We got over there. She even made a comment or something I, I remember later about it. But, uh, you know, we ended up going to the hospital and we stayed there all morning, all the way to the afternoon. I believe she went into labor around three o'clock. Right. It was in labor 
about four or five hours. A little over about four hours at that point. Hours. Yep. So yep. he was born just after 7 p.m., 7.13 in case you wanted to be exact. Um, so it was four hours. Actually, it was a day of laboring, building up to the true, you know, birthing labor, which is pretty grueling for most. So it was four hours of, you know, that coaching and mentoring and helping her get through it all. Um, but he was born. And what was interesting about that was her doctor kept anticipating. She's only 5'2". She's a small little petite gal. And the doctor kept produ- assuming that the baby was going to be six or seven pounds. And um, that, so that was kind of all of our mindsets is, oh, he's going to be an okay size young man. And it's going to be easy birth weight. Things were going to be great. And, you know, one thing kind of kudos to her is she had a birthing strategy and a plan in place. And it was to do it all natural without any medication, except for she was willing to try the new concept of laughing gas. Well, that's what she called it. I think it's called something else technically. Uh, yeah, I don't know like what. I don't oxide or something. Yeah. I really don't know. But yeah. I thought it was funny that she called it laughing gas as if, as if in her mind, oh, I'm, I'm going to have this gas yeah. and all I'm going to do is laugh. laugh. Well, that's not the way it happened for sure. And I know that some people have experienced that. I don't think it's the same type of gas. It may be the same type of gas. I don't know that you use at a dentist office. I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure either because they said it was a very quick on and off. And the interesting part of that was that is she was breathing that gas in during a contraction, which is the most difficult time in the laboring process. That's when the pain's really happening. But it's that fast acting gas. And then as soon as it's done and she takes the mask off, the gas just kind of dissipates. So that was the one willing, willingly thing she was willing to do that was not 100% natural. So it got to that point. And of course, building up to the day, you know, all those contra- contractions continue to grow. She kept saying, I can't do this much longer. Yeah, and we knew that, that, you know, this was really just the beginning of everything. And she needed to just stay focused. So we really, you know, through the coach coaching process, helped her realize where she is, where we needed her to be in order for everything to kind of come together. And uh, she did a great job. So the the funny thing about the gas, though, is she did willingly give that a shot. She told them, I want to try it. They said, okay, now's the, the time to do it. They brought the gas in. She tried it, put it on her face once. And I could tell by the look in her eyes, it was not a good mixture for her. So she very quickly, after that contraction ended, said, I'm not going to do that anymore. That's it. I'm, I'm not, it's not for me. So uh, again, she get kudos to her. She did it all natural and uh, no extra assistance through any pain medicines. And any of you that may be well, listening, lady girls. listeners may know that that's a pretty extreme process to go through is childbirth. Now, to top it all off, we kept saying, everybody kept thinking his birth weight was going to be six, seven pounds. This baby pops out at eight pounds, 13 ounces, just three ounces away from a nine pound baby and a little five two <laughs> lady. So a big um, boy. he was a big boy. It was a, a lot, a lot of a different experience than I think any of us anticipated and the doctor as well, because I remember her saying, wow, he's a big baby. So we just knew at that point, we just had to keep the momentum moving and uh, finish things up in a great way. And she did. So kudos to her. And now I will pass it back off to you because I've been doing most of the talking. For well, there's no doubt she well. was a real trooper. Uh, she went out there and she did basically suck it up in a big way. And I think that was attributed to both you and Brian being beside her time the whole time and giving her everything that she need. Brian was really good about that. And anything she asked for, he would take care of it pretty much. And you guys did work real well together as a team. And I don't think, and she even acknowledges that, you know, if you guys would have been there, she would have definitely had the epidural or whatever that's called. And uh, she she wouldn't have been able to maintain naturally. But actually, she actually was able to get through it. And she progressed. And it really seemed pretty easy. I mean, after she made over over a certain peak, she got to understand what the contractions were, what the pains were. I remember looking at the chart at one time, and she hit the biggest one she had. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the other ones after that weren't as big. So as she hit the bigger one and then she came down, I think a lot of times what I saw is when she came really low in mm-hmm. the contraction, she got more relaxed. It was harder to come back up. 
Right. Uh, but she did really good. She hung in there real well. Uh, and when the baby came, that was even more. And then the poor thing, you know, just when you think it's all over, the baby's out, right? Right. The baby's out. Everything's looking good. And, you know, she, she's also, you know, she's thinking, oh, good, I'm done with this pain. Right. Nope. Wrong. <laughs> Not going to happen. No, yeah. we got plenty of more pain for you. And, yeah, I was in the room. I was there right there uh, off the to the side time. while Deb and Brian were right next to her on each side. And there were two nurses and the doctor. And uh, well, I remember seeing one of the nurses up on top of the bed pushing down on her. And this other nurse on the other side, it was just a crazy scene. If you'd have seen it, you'd have sort of freaked out. I, 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 I've sort of freaked out. I mean, seeing her up on the bed pushing down like that. But I think I know why they were doing that. I mean, she only had so much pushing left, right. and they had to make sure that she didn't give up and that she they had, she had to get the baby out. And so because what, he was so large that it was an unexpected thing for her being so small that they really had some additional medical attention that needed to be taking care of her at the end that none of us knew about just because his pure size. So it was a matter of keeping her healthy and keeping it all done and over with in the fair you know, fashion for her and making sure that she stays healthy in order for that process and her healing to be completely. Yeah, but the pain wasn't over, I was no, saying, because was as, well, after the baby came out, uh, then they had to start working on other things. And I'm trying to document all this with the video camera and the camera and all this other stuff. You did a and great I job. remember hearing all the screams and, and the agony that she was going through afterwards. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, I, I would, I, men, we would never be able to do what these ladies do. There's just absolutely no way. There's no way I could ever do it. I, I'm just telling you, I know who I am. And to, to think in your mind, I just got rid of the baby, the pain's over, and then all of a sudden be inflicted two or three more times with some severe pain. And she made it. I mean, she was, she was sort of out of it. Yeah. But she hung in there. She made it. Everybody's nice, healthy, happy. That's right. We finally have Alexander here now. He's <laughs> it's here. been a Thank long haul. We appreciate all you listeners stay tuned and dealing with us as we go through this. That is a part of our life, and, and that's uh, what's been going on this week, and that's why this week's a little bit more unusual and, and more difficult than the others because we had that. And as you all know, that's a very emotional experience. There's a lot of energy involved on everybody's part, especially the mothers. Yes. And uh, so anyway, it took a lot out of us along with being ill. That just didn't help things. And in the room, oh, my goodness, it was freezing. Had to have been 60 degrees. Freezing. It was nice People there. listening up north, 60 degrees, well, that's nothing. Yeah. That was freezing. Any, for a Florida guy, anything below 73 is freezing. Yep, absolutely. It was cold. And, you know, some of that was we're working hard to help her work hard. And, you know, she's going through the cool down, hot heat flash stuff. It's just it was, it's a, and it was a long day, you know, for us to have been there, I don't know, 14, 15 hours. Yep, that's right. And so there, there goes Deb, she's over there coughing now. But that's what we do. And so what we want to do is we're going to do a, a special little show for you today. We're going to play a couple of uh, past segments that we've had in order to give us a little bit of, of a break this week because we need it. But we didn't want to leave you without anything. And there's a lot of new people that have been joining. So first of all, welcome to the people who have subscribed to our podcast and who are downloading it from all over the world. All over. We want to say thank you very much. We really, really, really appreciate you listening. And you just stay tuned because we do have a lot of things lined up on this show. We actually have some interviews coming up. We we, we actually were going to do an interview uh, today. But unfortunately, because of the way things worked out, we weren't able to do so. So we've got a couple of interviews that are lined up that you're going to want to hear. Absolutely. So a couple of writers, thank you for kind of pinch hitting for me there while my throat kind of took a little bit of a rest. Um, we're going to be interviewing the American Legion Auxiliaries member of the year for post 24. So her and her husband, which is the director of the Legion writers for that particular post, will be joining us here shortly to get on air and talk to you a little bit about Not shortly what they today, do. but in the future. <laughs> so anyway, so they'll be joining us here soon, and then we've got another one that we told you about last week, who's an author of a book, and he's gonna, that's going to be a great one as well. So we've I got agree. him lined up to coming up. So we've got a lot of great things in store for you in the future, 
and we just want you to stay tuned. We're going to continue to get better as long as life doesn't keep throwing things at us. I know. And, I think that's number three. We're done. We should be healing up and ready to roll. Well, and even if it does, we're going to keep taking it on anyway because that's just who we are. Yes. And then we're going to be going to uh, the place uh, in Ohio. The uh, We are going to be going to the Thunder on the Strip in the Geneva Lake, strip, and we're so, so excited to bring that to you. We'll certainly we'll be talking to riders, lots too. of video, lots of pictures. I can't wait to share that experience with our All listeners. Right. So we got a lot of great things lined up, so let's shift it into gear and get this rolling. Let's do it and enjoy the rest of the show. So we do need to let everyone know that what the Chuck and Deb show is all about, and it is about the truth behind the motorcycle mystique and inspiring real-life stories that will help you discover your purpose, find true freedom, and define your destiny. So with our pre-ride safety briefing behind us, let's kick the kickstands up and let the good times roll. All right, let's get it rolling here, and where are we going? Isn't that interesting? Neither one of us know where we're going. But I got an idea if you don't. Sure. Throw it out oh, there. Okay. Now, you had one. I didn't. No. Oh, you don't have one. Okay. Well, I don't. I say we start where we are. Just go over our week. And last week, we actually got to attend the West Coast Florida Riders uh, bike night at the Angry Rooster on State Road 70. We invited you all to come down. And from what we understand, several of you did. So thank you so much for being there and attending and listening to the Chuck and Deb show. You don't know how much that really means to us. We heard you out in the audience. We know you are, not exactly who you are, but we know that you were yelling and you were chanting Chuck and Deb yeah. show. <laughs> so we're so grateful for that. Uh, so that was really a true blessing to hear that from the crowd. And we were there for the first time. We were kindly invited by Chris, uh, of uh, founder of the West Coast Florida Riders, and uh, he allowed us to have a, a canopy set up. He allowed yeah. us to have like a, a little booth. area. Yeah. And he gave us a prime spot. So we're so grateful for him to be able to do that. I mean, you know, we were out there. We weren't selling anything. We weren't really doing anything. And we're like trying to figure out really what we're doing. And he had given us a little bit of advance notice about a week ago. And so we went out and, we, you know, how big of a space do you need? He says, and I think when, you know, 10 by 10. And we had already done some research on the canopy and that kind of thing because I have envisioned in my, in my mind where the Chuck and Deb is, show is going while it's on the road. And it didn't work out anything close to what we thought would happen, or at least my vision of Chuck and Deb show on the road. Well, as you realize, anytime we do anything brand new, whether it's riding for the first time or not, or trying something new in life, there's going to be this process of figuring it out and kind of finding and fine tuning what works and what doesn't work. So I kind of had that mindset that we did some planning and preparing before that event and, you know, did our purchasing and we can kind of start there. That was a little bit of a fiasco with the canopy. It was supposed to be here a few days ahead of schedule and we were excited about that, gave us time to do our own preparation and planning and put it up and test everything out and we've got the dreaded email that everybody worries about and it's delayed. And what made me the most nervous about this delay is not, okay, fine, it's delayed, but they said it could be from this day forward for about five days and they have no idea, they were just gonna have to check with the vendor and that made me extremely nervous. Although I know in my heart that the way we all saw it working out with the canopy arriving and having plenty of time to prepare and kind of get our game on um, and make sure that we were ready for our ride, I, you know, that worked out. So it did arrive the next day, just one day delayed. Yeah, no problem. We it had time. Day. It was a beautiful afternoon. We did set it up. We did set it up. Had a whole had plan. everything ready to roll. And um, so in that Turned regard, real we good. really, we Very nice really canopy. prepared in yeah. many ways. So we couldn't have asked and, for and better. Well, we that's true, you know, and it did work out fine for us that the canopy did arrive the day before. And we did set up. It was very easy set up. And I think this is leading into a story. I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to tell that story. But we're going to get to it here in just a moment. So, But I want to make sure that we go nice and slow today, Deb, for our listeners. Because I really don't want to miss anything. Because there was a really a lot. And so let's just take our time. Let's not be rushed. And let's try to think of the details that were involved for the first time down there at the Angry Rooster. As an invitee being there. As the Chuck and Deb show. And what all that meant to us and all 
exactly what we experienced and, and see if we can take that story and share it with our audience. I think that's a fantastic idea. So to kind of back it up a little bit, you know, when you start to prepare for an event like that, if, if it's your first time doing it, there's so much to consider. You know, just with purchasing a canopy alone, you know, we had done, like you said, a little bit of research, but then what color works for you and your message and or the venue that you're wanting to portray out there as a vendor in the marketplace. So that's one thing to consider. Um, there are a billion, and I'm going to over-exaggerate mm. that just a little bit, of canopies to choose from and accessories to go with it. And so, you know, we really had a vision in mind because of what we do, very different in the motorcycling community than many of the vendors out there that are selling their wares. Um, so we had purchased it with a very intentional purpose, um, appearance, function, and so we, we practiced with that. When we set it up, uh, we've got an actual enclosed cubicle so that we can do the things that we wanted to That's do, right. which is interviewing and having a chance to get to know the riders and, you know, really explore their backgrounds and who they are and what gives them the thrill of riding. And so we've got so many things that we want to accomplish. And the, the nice thing when we did our preparation is it was a beautiful, sunny, calm evening, uh, a little bit of breeze, <laughs> but, you know, we were able to test all of the walls and make sure that we had them coordinated together. Um, it's and, a little bit boring, but well, go ahead. No, I but we did. We just made detail, every, but... I mean, we went through, you know, it, and pretty thoroughly to make sure that we knew what we were up against come the next evening. So, um so the next evening arrives, we've got everything packed and ready to roll. So and, we think. Yep, so we think. So we get down to the Angry Rooster for our setup. And as you mentioned, they did a great job of putting us. Oh, yeah, they Chris gave us, they wonderful. Gave Chris several... was like, hey, go right over there. He's like, take that main spot. He was, he was like, wonderful. And these guys from the, the West Coast Florida Riders Group, they're, they're a great group of people. And everybody's so friendly and everybody gets along. And it's, it's just so nice to see. And that's another way we want to destroy one of those mystiques out there about the motorcycle mystique because not all motorcycle riders are bad people right i mean we had both everybody has bad spokes everybody all right absolutely we're gonna have right. bad spokes in every 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 crowd you go in there's gonna be a bad spoke there's gonna be one of those broken spokes if you will maybe maybe i don't want to say bad but maybe a broken, broken spoke, spoke yeah and just one that's missed out of place or not finely tuned like it should be or in true it's true okay, where it's yeah, been true right. to the wheel anyway so we can go on a little bit about that but i don't want to go too much no but you know the one thing i'm just going to kind of plug the west coast florida riders right now because i think the one thing that they do an excellent job of is they welcome all in any they really riders do. they're That's just so very true. open armed it's not about what type of motorcycle you ride or how you ride you know we heard stories from many while we were there about you know becoming part of the group and how easy it is to do that and they're just a welcoming riding community yeah, and how and riders. how they took care of one another Yes. You know, they're always taking care of one another. Uh, uh, we, we talked to someone about that, and, and, they, and they shared how well that they take care of one another when they're on the rides, especially somebody new that they bring out. Yeah. And so that means a lot. I mean, there's a lot of groups like that, and so there's a lot of people. But you know what? Not every group has to be that way. Correct. You know, some motorcycle organizations, groups, clubs, however you want to put it, could just leave that poor new guy way back and not care a moment about him. Right. But the impression that we got about the West Coast Florida riders is that these guys really cared about the people, and they watched out for the newbies that they brought along, and they, and they just really, really, really took good care of them. Yeah, so, you know, that kind of goes back to, I think most of the most of the groups that I know that we have interacted with, um, it, you do become just kind of a part of a family, and you have to really be careful that that family's not so close knit that you're not welcoming to others. And so, you know, that just really made me excited about the West Coast Florida riders because they seem to be very open um, to those that just have an interest in riding. I think that's pretty cool. You're so right about that, Deb. You're absolutely right. Let's let's, let's keep on moving on because I think we have a lot to cover. At, but at the same time, I still want to like keep it like so we don't try to forget because there was so much that we'd like to share today. And this is completely raw again because we don't have any of this is not scripted. We haven't discussed it. And we're just coming to you live. So kind of keep the, the story rolling is that as we came up on the um, event and West Coast Florida Riders pointed out where they wanted us to set up shop, if you will. Um, I look around and we're, he's putting us in this really nice shaded corner grassy area right beside this beautiful um, trailer that has a, a beautiful display of all these really cool items. Yeah, cool and I'm lights, like, designs, you know, it's, it's like, 
it's kind of nice that we're there, but also a, a little intimidating because <laughs> it's such a nice place and we don't know what the hell we're doing. You know, we're just walking in here for the first time with a little bit of a plan. Um, and so we were actually honored to be beside the Dirty Vegas Pierced Hearts trailer um, and Brandy and Jeff. Dirty, were the, Veg, Dirty Vegas Pierced Hearts trailer. <laughs> yes. Dirty Vegas Pierced, Pierced Hearts. Hearts was okay. A, was and a they, had, story. they had a lot of good things in there. And... They have some really cool items. Um, they had, she, she blessed me at the end of the evening with a little something, which I'll share at the end. Okay. Um, but she's got some really cool design t shirts. And they had it all set up so well. Anyway, I know it's I'm getting beautiful. off story. Let's stay so, on track. I threw you off track again. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Keep going. That's okay. So we get there. We introduce ourselves. Say hello. Did they, we? No, no, we didn't introduce ourselves. They came over. Brandy came uh, over and offered to help us. You're right. Because she saw us struggling (laughs) over there. So you got to back up with the story just a little bit. Well, okay. So I back in to unload the car. And then in the meantime, actually, we'll we'll kind of take two steps back. That's what I'm saying. Let's just like sort of slow down. We can jump ahead of ourselves so easy. So we get there. We back back in to where we need to unload. And um, shortly after we get a few things out of the car, there was another truck and trailer trying to come up this little hill um, and they were having difficulty because they were pulling the trailer which we didn't realize at the time was the band so oh yeah that guy was something else he was he was was maneuvering (laughs) this trailer like you wouldn't believe i mean like i that's the guy i need to take lessons from he was just he he was right oh you just had to see this guy he was incredible it's like he's done it you know a thousand times times. i'm sure yes yeah yeah. but then it it got a little quirky there for a while but he's maneuvering in these really tight spaces with trees and ditches and all sorts of really crazy stuff so we've got everything unloaded and it's time to set up our beautiful new canopy. So we start that process and, you know, as we're beginning to set it up, we start having conversations about how we're going to do this and, you know, are we going to set it up with our walls and all the things that we envisioned it to be. Because the sun was behind us and we're thinking, okay, we'll put this down for the sun and we're just giving different thoughts to the entire process. And in the meantime, there is this little breeze blowing yeah. as well. <laughs> a little, a little breeze. breeze. Well, and it was know. actually a windy day that day, and I, we didn't know it, uh, but apparently it was, remember, if you guys are local, the weekend was windy as all. It was, we should have been in Chicago or something. So we, we decided, you know, after we had a few conversations about what we were going to do as far as our setup and how that was going to all go, is we decided to set it up with all the walls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did, didn't we? But it, that's how we started, but is that how it ended up? Not quite. So this wind was giving us a fit, and the walls were caving in. It was just craziness. Um, craziness. I love it when she talks craziness. <laughs> craziness. So it was. It was It was a challenge. We had things going on. It was moving the canopy. It was all over the place because it was not well, just on. a little yeah, it bit It wasn't just wind. moving. No, hold on. It didn't move the canopy right away. Well, no, it didn't. The walls. We our first it, wall it, was in, and it was pushing go, on the wall. There you go. No, it didn't. Yeah, the canopy did not remove. Did not move right away. No. We had one wall set up. Yep. We had another wall that we're in the middle of setting up. I think we had the right wall and the back wall we we're about to set up, and then it moved. It blew on us. Yes. A gust of wind came in. Yes, it sure did. And lifted the canopy and actually scooted it pretty far. I yeah, thought it moved like it over. It's like, oh boy, and I had to grab a hold of it and hold it down. Well, you got a hold of the back end or, or whatever. Walls, it was kind of a circus show all the way around us trying to figure out what we had to do. So and, and so we're in the middle of this, and then, you know, another gust of wind comes. <laughs> That's right, and you're going to want to hear the rest of that story. So stay tuned as we hear a word from our sponsors. Tony and Guy Hairdressing Academy, where hairdressing is our passion. Your spotlight experience begins with a hands-on, learn-by-doing approach. A true salon experience. We create entrepreneurial hairdressers with endless opportunities. Financial aid available for those who qualify. Got a creative flair, a passion for people, a desire to be a leader in the fashion industry? Then call our Tony and Guy Hairdressing Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado at 719-390-9898. Again, that number is 719-390-9898 or visit www.coloradosprings.tonaguy.edu. To learn more about our school in Kurt Allen, Idaho, call 208-930-1276. Again, that number is 208-930-1276 or visit www.curdlene.tonaguy.edu. You know a career in beauty is right for you. 
Now choose the cosmetology school that puts the spotlight on you. Attend the Tony and Guy Hairdressing Academy. Hi, and welcome back to the Chuck and Deb Show. Where were we? This the, Our canopy was about ready to blow over. Blow it, 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 it It almost hit the car. It did. It, it almost hit our car that was parked right next to it. I remember it lifting up, and we were real close over there and almost hit the car. It did. Almost hit the car. It was um, pretty That would have messed it up pretty bad. It, was, it would have scratched it horribly. So I'm so grateful that we caught it. So we quickly realized that the problem, you pointed out the fact that the walls were the issue. Yeah, well... Yeah, because you wanted to put up the back wall. You thought if you I put the back wall... I said maybe one more wall would help it out. Yeah, it would prevent the wind yeah. from blowing and hitting this wall. And I'm like, well, I think two walls... Actually, you was, was there a side third wall? wall? We did two I'm, side I, I walls. I can't remember. Was... We were trying to do all sorts of things. I'm sure people got a quick kick out of watching us. Like you said, it was a circus. It was a circus. And so then the I Chuck said, well... and Deb circus. <laughs> so I said, well, maybe if we turn the canopy so that the wind can blow through it. No, I said that. We were no, all... I'll let you take credit well, for it. That doesn't matter. We were all talking about different solutions. And, and it, ultimately, it was about getting the can, the sides down off the canopy because they were just creating this kite. It's just, yeah, it was a kite. It was, it was horrible. We could have hooked a string up and let that thing fly all over the place, but there were too many motorcycles to have to worry about. That would have been bad. Why weren't so, we on our motorcycle? Well, we had a whole bunch of gear, and yeah. this canopy is huge and heavy, and yeah. it just doesn't transport well on a I motorcycle. Know. So we may need to Gotta rethink figure that one those out. solutions as we go. Like the trailer or something. Exactly. So, I like um, to ride them. Um, so what we decided to do then, take the walls down, that was the next decision, and then we had these really nice neighbors that came over yeah. again. And then Did all I of a sudden, Brandy, like, sort of appeared. That's what we were talking yeah. about. That's sort of where oh, this was going. Yeah, Brandy, there's like, Brandy. Oh, I meant, to, I meant to come on. I saw you guys. I yeah, wanted to come struggling. over and help or something. I should have come over earlier and saw you. <laughs> help you out. So their, the first suggestion, we removed the walls. The well, first suggestion was to lower the back end. Well, that's because Chris came back and he saw it or something. And Chris was kind enough. He said, yeah, I saw a drunk guy, guy do that on the beach and it worked real well. So lower the back and that was good. But then Brandy's husband, Jeff, came over and he had some suggestions about what to do. <laughs> Why are you and laughing? Because it was absolutely thinking back. It must have from someone else's outside Oh, if anybody would have been sitting there in a chair watching all this. Like it's sort of like people backing it. in boats or, you know, loading boats off and For the on. very first time. Yeah. yeah. It's like, when are these amateurs going to really get their act together? Because it just had to have been hysterical being on the outside. I know I was just in panic mode going, oh, no, we're up you against really the clock. You were really in panic mode? Yes, because we had so many things to try and get done and accomplished before this big event started. So I, I, I was more in embarrassment mode. You were in panic mode. I was in embarrassment mode. Yeah, so the two of those together just doesn't work too well. So Well, it worked out. I mean, it did. It's sort, so of be, be sort of a theme for the Chuck and Deb show. Embarrassment. It's sort of like the Rock and Road show. It's <laughs> brought to you by technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, Chuck Ours and Deb show. And show by... brought, to, brought to you by difficulties, period. That's right. <laughs> By stuff that just doesn't go quite right. So, yeah, we can't say that on the air. <laughs> stuff. That's right. Because it doesn't go quite right, though. So remember that. Um, but we're getting better at it. So Jeff has this great And who great is idea. Jeff? You haven't mentioned who Jeff I did. is. Brandy and well, Jeff let's make sure, are our next-door neighbors it. at Dirty next door Vegas um, Pierced Hearts. So That's with right. a nice trailer. Beautiful trailer. But Beautiful you didn't trailer. mention that Jeff was part of... Well, I did. I said Jeff and Brandy, but anyways. You guys know she didn't. Okay, so Jeff comes over finally to help a lending hand. Yep, and, <laughs> and, and I'm tying one up the way I think it should be tied up, and Jeff goes over well, and no, helps you. wait, wait, wait. Brandy says, well, we've got these augers okay, there you go. that we... we got to kind of wait, take a half a step back. She said, we've got these augers that we've used to tie and strap down ours in be the past. Because they see that the... Canopy's blowing all over the place, and motorcycles are in danger, and people are eyeing us like they've got Bob ready to pull, you know. And this event is going not going very well to start for us. So they come over, help out, and so they go get some augers, they get some straps, and um, so Jeff said, This is what they do. And I'm like, It's perfect because. It's perfect because we've used those same augers for our dogs. <laughs> yeah, we used to, yeah, for our dogs in our backyard, we used those same augers to like uh, go ahead and hook them up and let them run free back there with the leash on and they could get around and have a great time with it. But we were not in that same place that night. So we're anchoring in the and, and augers into we, the ground. Plus we did say that, you know, if we had to, we were going to go over, well, I kept calling it Home Depot, but it was Lowe's. It was Lowe's, oh, right. Oh, yeah, here we go. Wrong store. Okay, anyway. So we always had, we a backup, we had a backup plan that's that we could we always we go gonna... get supplies there. But then there was Brandy and Jeff out of yes, nowhere. <laughs> that's right. Uh, so Jeff has these great tools to help out. He lends them to us for the evening, and 
Of course, I'm on one side putting that tail end down and Chuck's on the other side. And we're, you know, running the augers into the ground. And I just happened to get mine in first. Not like it's a big deal, oh, but I just have to rub it in. Oh, there you go. Rub that in. in. But, uh, <laughs> I hit a few rocks, some sure. boulders. There were big, huge boulders over there. That dirt is the was reason hard. that I couldn't get it in. Yeah. Well, you didn't see. There were some boulders. I picked up and moved them. Okay. I didn't see that, but yeah. I'll, I'll give Jeff, you Jeff, I think, saw him, maybe. Yeah, he probably kicked him on the way or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I got the auger in. And I can't, I don't know how to tie off the uh, knots on that. So Jeff comes over and says, oh, well, let me show you how to do that. Is that what he said? Let me show you. Yes. So then he goes, this is how you do the knots from my days of marine life. And he said, this is how that I'm just clarifying this, what he said to you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Keep going. So he bends, kneels down and starts to show me how to loop one in and make it longer and then loop it back in again. He said, it'll never come untied if you do this double marine, not like this. Hmm, very interesting. Those, those were the exact words because I hope, Jeff, if you're listening, if those were the exact words, please let us know. <laughs> but those were the exact words he said to you? I, I believe so. You know, Pretty it's been close. a little while. So okay. he said, yeah, because he was I, really, know, really wanting to be, help. Because here's where the embarrassment comes in. <laughs> yeah. Jeff finishes with Deb and he sees me over there struggling. <laughs> And Jeff comes over, he kneels down, he says, watch this. <laughs> no, Jeff didn't say that to you? I don't think so. No, Jeff says, watch I'm... this. And Brandy says, yeah, I've watched it a hundred times or something. <laughs> and, and so Jeff goes ahead and he shows me how to tie it. And I am feeling so, so uh, not so macho. You know, it's there's certain things I know and certain ways I do, but... It's a marine dog. Uh, and, and you know what? I remember what he said. I said, you need to go. He says, you need to be a Cub Scout. And the thing <laughs> is, when I used to live up in the Panhandle, I was a Cub Scout. I used to love wearing my Cub Scout uniform. <laughs> but that didn't transfer to real life to where here I am all these years later. Don't really know how to tie a knot. I know how one knot to tie. I've taught myself. And that was a fishing knot. And that's the only knot I have really remembered to be able to tie. I'll beg to differ. You actually know how to tie a tie knot, too. Oh, well, I do know how you to do. tie a tie knot. That took a, a lot of practice, them. too. You're talking about a tie. <laughs> a like tie, a tie, yeah. No, tie. We, don't, we don't talk ties on motorcycle shows. No, but it's, I'm giving you credit well, okay. for a second type and of I knot. And I do know how to tie just a regular knot, and that's what I did in the first place, because when Jeff came over, I had to untie my regular knot for him to say, the now Marie watch. This. Now watch this. He, but he was saying, now watch. He says, now watch. In other words, he was trying to instruct me on how to do it. And I saw how he did it. I was like, okay, fold it in, fold it down. Could I reproduce that? I said so, no. And it was, I mean, come on, guys. I mean, is, is there anybody out there like me? I just don't know how to tie knots and it's embarrassing. It's- if you're looking to either sell or buy a home in the Bradenton North River area, contact Deb Bell to help make your dreams come true at Reynolds Realty. Call Deb Bell, 941-713-5035. That's 941-713-5035 or online at parishfl.com. For all of your real estate needs, call Deb Bell. Someone that we met when we were in Daytona. It's actually called a group called Kill 22. And so, Chuck, if you will, actually, I'm wearing what I refer to as my honor ring, and they call it the honor ring. And that's a salute for those who serve. Now, here's a little bit more information about the 22 Kill honor ring. It's a black band, again, that I wear very proudly on my index finger as a silent salute to all veterans and first responders past and present. So the honor ring is not simply a fashion statement. It's a symbol of respect and support. And so this is an organization that we've been very proud of. We did a, if you haven't had a chance to visit our Facebook page and catch that live, but also um, go out to the Chuck and Deb show and check that out because we, our hearts kind of just melted when we met them and fell in love with their passion and desires. So, and then we did an interview. So you want to check that out and then we're going to go ahead and follow it up here. Um, you can go out to 22kill.com to learn more about it. And it is a veterans organization organization to help for the mental ill. Um, and uh, we're going to leave it with this. It's, we're going to go ahead. We've got a little, um, I guess, if you will, let's call it a public 
service yes. announcement yep. or an audio clip yep. that we found from them. That I think uh, you all will be interested in Describes hearing. Describes who they are, absolutely. And so we're going to go ahead and, and do that, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned, okay, everybody? We appreciate you. What is my purpose now? What do I do now? The only focus I had was thinking about how not worth it I am to go on living, how I'm a burden to my family and the people that love me the most. But my whole goal was to be a Marine. You don't have triumph without tragedy. On September 20th, 2004, we were in a place called Dulab, Iraq. We hit a triple stack tank mine. It was pressure plate ignited, and it was a significant explosion. I knew midair that this was very bad. My first thought was, please don't take me in front of my Marines. Don't let my brothers watch me die. I had over 50 operations and I had uh, over 20 blood transfusions. Throughout my time of recovery and coming off of medication and you know, fighting addiction, I learned that physical pain reminds you you're alive, but mental pain tests your will to stay that way. I struggled with suicidal ideation every day. This was the most wounded, still is. It's not my prosthetic or my left leg or my left arm, it's my mind. 22 kills started in 2012 after a study came out by the VA stating that 22 veterans die by suicide every day on average. That number has since gone down. One is too many at the end of the day, no matter what anyway. I've buried 29 of my personal friends who've died by suicide. Our hyper-focus is on all things mental wellness. Programs that are both traditional and non-traditional. The form of non-traditional would be, for example, our Camp Bahala program, where we have weekend retreats for warriors and first responders and their families. They ultimately saved my life. The fundamentals of being in the military and being a veteran is where our connection is. We're all human, and humans have suffering. We meet you where you are to heal the fractured parts of you. We're all in it together, and we're all gonna fall short. It's okay to not be okay. The only time you grow is when you're uncomfortable. So get uncomfortable and start talking about the hard things, because that's when change is made. When you're able to change your mindset, to empower yourself, to want to not only live, but live well, it's like a phoenix rising out of the ashes and you get to live in this beautiful, beautiful place where you feel so much freedom because you're not worried about what society is telling you to think and do. You get one shot, one shot at this thing called life. You might as well fly through it in a beautiful way. We thank our men and women, our service men and women, for all that they do. For more information about 22 Kill, the services they offer, and ways to help, visit 22kill.com. Hi, I'm Chuck. And, uh, and welcome back. We hope that you enjoyed that segment in regards to 22, 22 Kill. Kill. And, uh, you know, there's a lot going on with that organization, and they are highly supported uh, by the motor motorcycle community, and we hope that you will help to support them as well, even if you're not part of the motorcycle community. Yet. So <laughs> I just want to make sure and mention that they do have a support line available of 1-800-273-8255. And this is if you're in crisis or need someone to talk to right away, please reach out to them at one 800 Two seven three eight two five five, or uh, if nothing else, at least text message them at eight three eight two five five. Again, text message is eight three eight two five five, and the phone number is one eight hundred two seven three eight two five five. And the reason we're so compassionate about that is because we're veterans. We're we're not veterans ourselves, but yet we're children of veterans. And I've seen it in living proof. My dad is a Vietnam veteran. Two tours of Vietnam, and I've watched him go through what he's gone through and I've lived through as a child what he experienced and some of the horror and the terrors and the you know the the um, night trauma that he's dealt with in nightmares so I haven't experienced it personally but I have experienced it personally in a lot of different ways as a family member so please reach out to those that can help you and let's give back to those who have actually sacrificed everything for our freedoms, okay? Absolutely. So let's all do our part and make sure that we're participating in helping those veterans so that they too can back, get back to what we might all call, call what's a normal life. But what is a normal, normal life? Normal life, I agree with that. So what's normal? But the one thing I love about the 22 Kill program is they have this um, 
specific program called the Wind Therapy Program. And this is to help veterans reconnect through the motorcycling community by receiving their endorsement and attending a motorcycle safety um, basic riders course. And I think why I'm so passionate about it, Chuck, is because I am a coach for the basic riders coach program through the Motorcycle Safety Foundation, as well as the Harley Davidson program. And um, what what I think is fascinating about the riding community, very similar to the military community, is there is this bond among riders, which is very similar to the bond among military folk. And, you know, we give the hand wave, we uh, give the nod or whatever the case may be, but we've got a camaraderie that is like none other in many communities out there because we have this commonality of riding motorcycles. And I think that makes us unique in many ways, but also a brotherhood of uh, more than what you would imagine as a motorcycle enthusiast. So I really don't have anything to add to it, you know. (laughs) Um, you know, I don't know where you're going with it. So, well, you know, I've caught you off guard, which is unusual, but the wind therapy program through the, um, 22 kill program is specifically for veterans. And we're going to share a little bit more about that with you. But what I think is impressive to me is I do teach for a local Harley Davidson dealer. And if you're interested as a veteran to learn more about that concept of riding or becoming part of the riding community, I'm going to ask you once more to reach out. If I get enough support, I will certainly plead, beg, borrow, and steal if I can my personal time with our local Harley dealer to provide this course to you. And again, our number is area code 941-216-ROCK or 7625. I'd love as a coach, I will be happy to volunteer my time, my weekend, um, 20 plus hours to help coach the program for you because I believe so strongly in the community of military as well as the riding community that I would love to do that for you. So please reach out to us at the 941-216 ROCKED or 7625 and let us know that you're interested in participating in the wind therapy program. And in addition to that, I will reach out to the 22 kill program and let them know that I'm willing to offer that as a service in my local area. And you sort of did that when we met with the organization when we were at Daytona Mm -hmm. and they were very nice. Again, you want to check out that interview on our Facebook page. Um, It's not highly professional, uh, (laughs) but it, it, it uh, actually goes out there and shows a little bit about what they are about, and we appreciate uh, what they're doing. And I hope you're hearing what Deb's talking about here. What she really wants to do is volunteer her time. If Harley Davidson and I guess it would be Rossiter is who you work with right now. If there is enough support, I don't know what that number is. I guess that would be up to Harley Davidson and maybe Rossiter. Maybe it's five. Maybe it's ten. Maybe it's six people. And if there's uh, vets out there that um, want to step forward. And call us on that number and tell us that you're interested in participating in that. Then we will see what we can do, or Deb will, and see what the Chuck and Deb show can do in order to help you get out there and learn how to ride. Absolutely. So I'm excited about that. We've got lots of opportunity. And with that, I will kind of cut to the 22 Kills program partnered with JP Cycles um, in order to provide the wind therapy program. Yep, this is just a little video. Well, actually, uh, we're taking some audio off uh, the promotion that JP Cycle did for 22 Kill. Yep, here you go. Hey, I'm Jake Schick. I'm the CEO of 22 Kill. Unfortunately, in our country, we lose between 20 and 22 veterans a day by their own hand. Our mission at 22 Kill is to empower warriors and first responders and their families to not only live, but live well. That's why we've developed programs such as this weekend's program having to do with wind therapy. The idea behind getting these warriors into the wind and getting them on bikes is to introduce them to a whole new community. A significant portion of the motorcycle community supports 22 Kill. So through JMP Cycles and our partnership, we're going to be following these warriors through the weekend. My name is Sean Cummings and I served in the United States Air Force for two and a half years. My name is Faith Ann Sykes. I served in the Army for six and a half years. My name's Matt Raley. I served uh, in the United States Marine Corps. Chandler Walker, United States Marine Corps. When I was introduced to 22 Kill, just like all the other guys that get out of service, 
they have a hard time transitioning. Wings of Kill came to me because of a good friend of mine that I grew up with, and it's something that me and my family both have gotten behind and supported. I heard about 22 Kill a few years ago on social media. I have a fear of motorcycles. I fell off one a long time ago, and I haven't been back on one since. I was introduced to 22 Kill through Tanya Mack. That's what's got me here to do this motorcycle class. And I'm about to go this afternoon and get on the motorcycle for the first time since falling. 22 Kill started not only for the veteran suicide count, but also set up an outreach program to, to help them with that transition. What I'm hoping to get from this weekend and these, these classes is understanding of how to ride, what sort of benefits come out of riding, and what I hear is wind therapy. I notice there's a, a great community here in town and all across the nation among veteran riders, and uh, I think that that's it's really something special I like to get involved. A lot of guys, they lose touch with the reality that one day their problems will go away. Well, it doesn't work like that. You have to find some therapeutic release in this world. 22 Kill is finding that wind therapy is the most therapeutic way you can do it. My name is Leroy Thompson. I've been teaching rider education for nearly 26 years now. I started teaching this when I was in the service myself. Being around the dealership and hearing about this program is an amazing thing. Truly something that I think that has been missed in the past and it's good to see it come to light now. When I get on my bike and go riding and I can get on the road and get on some backcountry roads and I got the wind in my face and I don't have nothing else to think about, I like to think that these guys that are getting out on their bikes and riding have that opportunity to, to, to leave things behind and just focus on the road ahead of them. Wasn't that fantastic? Hey, listen, I mean, if anybody's been on a bike, they can they can know exactly what they're talking about in this video and how just getting out in the wind and experiencing the ride. And the ride for me is all about freedom. And I believe that our veterans are going to be able to understand or anybody who's interested in getting out there and getting their ride on is going to find out what true freedom is all about. And that's our hashtag finding true freedom. So as, as a kind of a late bloomer in the motorcycling industry, I, I found it about 10 years, a little over 10 years ago myself. And um, it is a freedom like you've never experienced before. It's just amazing the smells, the Visuals. freedom, the visual concepts that you can't capture while you're in behind a wheel of a car. Sounds. The sounds of things. It's just amazing what that true freedom is all about. And again, depending upon your environment, and your culture, um, we've lived in mountain country, and I know that that mountain riding is very different than our flat line riding, um, flat, la flat land riding, if mm -hmm. you will. But we, you know, right now we choose to live in a place where there's strawberries um, in certain times of growth, um, orange blossoms in certain times of growth, and all of those scents, smells aromas um, are different experiences is that depending upon the time of the year, it just brings a different and concept just, of freedom to you. And it just adds so much to the ride because you're just out there. And really, you know, when you're out there, everybody knows that rides, it, the ride is what it's all about, experiencing the ride. And of course, the destination is wonderful too, but it's about getting on and just experiencing the ride and just going for it. And there's a lot to take in. I mean, we can go on and on about it. I think we've gone on enough about it. Uh, but, you know, for us, we love to ride. We love to get out and ride. We wish we could do more riding. That's how much we love to ride. And one of my favorite stories is we came home from a ride. We're sitting at the kitchen table and Deb just sort of sitting there and she goes, she started saying, I just love to ride. <laughs> and she started crying. She started that? crying because she just Love, love to ride. ride. And that's when you know it's from real. That's that's when you know it's from the heart. When you actually feel it in your body and your soul that what riding's all about. Because it does give you that ultimate sense of freedom that you'll never find anywhere else. You're not going to find it in a cage. What do we talk about when you're talking about cagers in a cage? We're talking about when you're just riding around your car, your vehicle. Um, you're just not going to find that same sense of freedom that you're going to find in an automobile. Now, maybe in a convertible. I don't know. Uh, it might, 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 be, might be possible. But it's not really the same thing. It might be in a spider or some of those other things they got out there, sure enough. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, but we like it on two wheels. Uh, two or three. I'll give it three-wheelers that yeah, same Yeah, we go for concept. the three-wheelers, so, too. 
the idea is you're completely open, you're completely vulnerable, you are out there in the elements, and you know what? Bring it on is my philosophy. And quite honestly, that's part of what this show is all about. It's about the ride, but it's also about how the ride relates to life. <laughs> Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, riding a motorcycle can be highly related to everything that you do in your life. Deb, you know what? You're not prepared for this. And this is what I love about doing this show. So, you know, you're this big shot rider coach, right? Right. Yeah. Not. So why don't you tell us what is one of the things that maybe people need to understand about riding, especially when they're starting off and they're coming to your, your train? Is there something that they should have or know about before they come to your train that will help them be successful? Man, that's a tough and well, loaded question. I like question. tough and loaded questions. I know. You gave it to me today for sure. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. but, but just think about it. You know, so somebody's coming in. They're new. They've never ridden before. And it happens a lot, right? Because you get a lot of, yeah. a lot of um, uh, females in. A lot of good ladies in, yep. and a lot of them, a new lot of riders. times, they're new riders, and a lot of times they're there because their boyfriend or husband who rides wants them to learn how to ride, right? Right. Yep, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've been there. I mean, that's why you ride today. No, not. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who bought you a motorcycle so you can learn how to ride? I, and what I, was that motorcycle, by the it, way? That 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 motorcycle was like the most beautiful. It was the beautiful bike. Purple, purple. Yamaha Virago, Virago. Virago. Oh, and it man. was 535. It was a beautiful motorcycle. I will never ever in my lifetime forget that motorcycle. It was a beautiful bike. A beautiful I love the bike myself. I would love I really to have did. it today. I'd love to have it today as well. So here's the deal. So yes, female riders come in. And, and not that if this doesn't happen, riders. I don't want it to relate to just there, the females. And two, I apologize for maybe no. if that's the way it sounded. But. There, there are two things that I would recommend to riders. First of all, if you're interested or thinking about attending a rider's course, the one thing that gets most riders initially is the concept of the clutch by the left hand. That, that physical mentality of using that left hand like you've never used it before, and many of the initial skills are very clutch-based. It's, it's clutch throttle control, as we call it. So... If you can prepare prior to the class with a tennis ball or an exercise ball or something to prepare that clutch hand and those muscles uh, to on the realize left hand, on the left because hand. Because most people are right-handed dominant. True, but the clutch is always on the left hand. Right. So the so idea that's even, is your, that your that's left right. hand is even weaker. So that clutch hand needs to really get the exercise that it's not used to having. So whether it's a tennis ball, a dog's toy, or something. Dog's toy? Well, Where do whatever. you come up this stuff? I don't know, something. Wee, wee, wee. Can you guys hear the dog toy right now? Beep, 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 beep. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's something to exercise those muscles of that arm and that hand that you're not used to using. So that's number one. But secondly, I think most important of all is the mindset. Because many times I see writers come into or student writers come in because someone told them to or suggested they do, and they're not so sure about this whole concept of riding, but they really think it might be a good idea. The, the idea is fantastic, and every rider that wants to learn, I am the first person to be your advocate to say, let's go, let's get it done. But I think what's important about mindset is you've got to have the mindset, and I, often in my classes I refer to as a ninja, a ninja mindset, because think about the ninja. A ninja is stealthy, they're skilled. They've got this expertise, knowledge, and... Um, well, can they ride motorcycles? No. Oh, you know they can, actually. I've seen them in some movies. <laughs> the ninjas on the motorcycles. I can't remember what that movie is, but those are yeah, the ninjas jixers. do ride those cart rockets. They're jixers, but yeah, I get it. <laughs> so the idea is, though, is that the ninja didn't start off being a ninja, and a rider never starts off being a uh, an expert rider either. So... You know, most people need to give themselves a break mentally and realize that it's a process of learning that they'll get to. But yet, you know, just come in with an open mind and be willing to learn because there's so much about learning to ride that's just an amazing experience. And, and really, truly, if you take a motorcycle safety foundation course, which is all that I'm familiar with and I can only speak on, is that they have done such an excellent job of creating the foundation from the very basics all the way to a more advanced knowledge skill, is that you know, they've done a great job of creating just a step-by-step -step approach and process to learning how to ride. And it's just almost, people get get out of the course and they're just like, oh my gosh, Deb, you're so amazing. And I go, no, no, no. It has nothing to do with Deb, the rider coach. It has everything to do with Motorcycle Safety Foundation's program 
of a program to ride. So. Well, I think the coach does have a little bit to do with it. I, I mean, you could be stiff and boring, and I I'm not sure they'd be thanking you at the same time. I mean, you do try to liven it up with the little ninja toys that you hand out and the different things. But what do you use, pipe cleaners or something no, like I that? I do. Keep what do you use pipe cleaners for? Well, Is that to strengthen the little forearm? No, not at all. <laughs> that's, a, that's no. It's a whole, you've got to attend to figure that out. So I'm not going to give all my secrets well, away. Well, I'll give all your secrets no, away. I've I never attended. Will. I know, but you've got to come to my class. Again, if you're interested in learning how to ride, I am here as a rider coach to help you in every step of the way. So be sure to reach out to us at the Chuck and Deb Show. You've been listening to the Chuck and Deb Show, heard each Wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m. right here on 1490 AM WWPR. We thank you for listening, and we invite you to join us next week.